So who these people you see in this world are nothing but the reflected gods. They are Atma, Brahma, pure consciousness, reflecting on each person's mind, who call it on the call, is reflected. And that is the reason we are conscious. When that consciousness departs, your body is dead. You are dead. That consciousness, that is Brahma, that is the Atma, that is within all of us. And that is the way we find it. But we do not realize that Atma, that is the problem. Why? God creates our mind without doing tendencies. We are going on the sense objects. But if you want to experience that truth, shut the senses and see beyond this. Atman within, that is controlling the self. So his soul is potentially divine. The goal is to manifest his divinity. He is telling the Muslims is so practical. To the Western world, he taught these four jewels. Manifest the divinity. How can you manifest it? The Hindus have four jokes. Karma Yoga, Path of Answer to Shakshat, Bhakti Yoga, Path of Devotion, Raja Yoga, Path of Meditation, Jnana Yoga, Path of Discrimination. All people in this world, whatever you will find, they have this practicing knowingly, unknowingly, this four yoga. I cannot love you if I do not know you. And if I want to know you, love you, I have to do something for you. Moreover, I have to think of you. That's the four yoga that I I remember one day I was talking to Houston Smith, he came as a professor. I thought, Houston, you know, Hinduism, this four yoga or something. Oh, no, 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 so no, but Christ also taught four yoga. <laughs> Love thy Lord with all thy heart, that is Bhakti Yoga. All thy soul, that is Gana Yoga. All thy mind, that is Raja Yoga. And all thy strength, that is Kama Yoga. Swami. <coughs> Christ also said, the Christian people do not understand. Love thy Lord with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. Just see, Christ also taught the four yoga. Very, very interesting, you know. <laughs> Doctrine, dogmas, rituals are all nothing but secondary teachings, Swamiji said. Rituals. Each religion has four parts. The first part of the religion is philosophy. Try to understand it through the internet. Second, ritual. Most people understand. They come to our temple with fruits with flowers, the offer, the priest, poet, life, they feel that is religion. That is the most people, those who are very beginners, they understand religion in that way. What's it? Rituals. Heart? Symbols. All religions are symbols. Christianity, cross. Hinduism, own. Judaism, the eight lamps of the Jewish symbol. Islam, crescent. So all these religions are understood, are understood by symbol. Or mysticism. Very strange this mysticism that I was telling that you know. <laughs> Sri Ramakrishna said all jackals in the world have to be the same way. Russian jackal, American jackal, Indian jackal, their voices are not different, same voice. So those who are mystics, and those who are experienced God, when they speak, they speak in the same language. Because they hear the same truth. Very, very interesting, you know, that how I remember in 1992, I went to Asit, sorry, St. Teresa of Avila. In Avila, I went there in Spain. Topic contemporary mysticism. I spoke on Ramakrishna. And uh, then I said, you know, in the 19th century, the main focus of religion was reason. Kant, Hegel, reason, reason, reason. We understand, we understand, want to understand God, reason. 
Second, in the 20th century, the main focus of religion was humanity. If religion cannot do any good, human beings, what good is that? What good is that in religion? If we, they do not help human beings, happiness, joy in this world. That was the main focus in the 20th century. The 21st century, people say we rage enough, we heard enough, we rage, we speak enough. We want to free you. That is happening in this century. That is what mysticism, genetic feelings of God. I'm just telling the evolution of religion. Religion is the manifestation of divinity. In Swamiji, I wrote an article, I remember, in 1980, A New Religion Begins, where I mentioned that Swami Vivekananda redefined religion. The old religion said he was an atheist who did not believe in God. The new religion says he is an atheist who does not believe in himself. Faith in oneself, that is true religion. Religion is being and becoming. Religion is realization. That is what religion is. And religion means I'm fasting, I'm offering some flower, that is religion, that is for the believers. Mahatma Gandhi says those who have faith in themselves, they have faith in God. Sometimes we see some young people blame others. Oh, my father's parents are not good. Oh, I have a bad gene. Oh, well, the system is not good. And they're taking drugs. And blaming everybody. And I am just I'm the child of God. You know, I'm innocent, I'm good. And all of that. Those who are weak, they generally talk that. They always blame others. <coughs> and this, I, am, I am a divine child. <laughs> the students, I remind them, Shatranam or Tayanam Do you know what is your religion? Study. Build your life and character. If you read the Vedic periods, the convocation address in the Tiri Upanishad, Matri Devo Bhava, Pitri Devo Bhava, Acharya Devo Bhava, Uthiti Devo Bhava, Yajnana Vaddhani, Parvani. Adore your mother as God, adore your father as God, adore your teacher, guest as God. That is the convocation address in the Vedic period. How beautiful our religion <coughs> change our young people. <laughs> Next we find, you know, Shantra. That is the most important aspect of religion. Shraddha. We translate faith. Shraddha is difficult to say. It is an unsay, untranslatable word. Do you know why? <laughs> Shraddha. In Shraddha there is faith, love, sincerity, and focus, and meaning, bravery, strength, courage. All these ideas combined make that word Shraddha. When I talk about Shraddha, do you know what I say? Tornado in the Midwest. A scattered cloud doesn't have any strength. But when the clouds become thick and concentrated, when it blows 200 miles per hour, boom, your house car will be blown away. Why? That tornado, one-pointed, concentrated cloud is blowing. That is called Shraddha. When a person has that kind of Shraddha, he can do impossible possible. 
that Swamiji said, Shabda. Very, very important about this Shabda. <coughs> this Shabda, what does it develop? It brings self consciousness concentration. Let me tell you. When I first joined the monastery, I wrote a letter to the president. Please give me some advice. Do you know what he wrote? He wrote a small Bengali poem to me. Name of the poem is Aligona. I cannot. Aligona Ukodati Bodhiyana Ar Kano Paribena Taha Pabo Bar Bar Toshone Padija Tumi Padibe Taha Parbuke Raparu Karo Jotunava. He wrote in 1960. Still that paper I saved. Still with me. He wrote by his own hand. Meaning, never say in your life that I cannot. If you make a fault, try again and again, you will make it. If ten people can do, you also can do. Think about it again and again. Do you know what he meant? He meant bring self confidence. Develop your character. You can do it. To say Napoleon's famous word, impossible is a word found in the dictionary of a fool. When he was invading, the Alps mountain came in front. Napoleon told his army, which is, is the mountain we are not crossing. What? Which is impossible to cross this mountain. Then he said, impossible is a word found in the dictionary of a fool. We must cross this mountain. That is called Shraddha. Never say I cannot. My teacher, he told that in the monastery, I used to take all as the develop. Do you know why? That will bring me self confidence and I experience God's grace. God's grace. God's grace. I can do it. I can do it. Some monks will get avoid. Oh no, I can't do it. I will I used to jump the difficult. I shall be there. But at that development, self confidence. Is self confidence, approbation, faith, faith, faith in ourselves. Swamiji said, if you do not have faith of yourself, there are 33 million gods and goddesses, you cannot have faith in them. First, faith in them. That is God's whole religion. Another thing Swamiji mentioned about, especially the young generation, success. You know how does the success come? It comes from concentration. All people, yogis, scientists, teachers, everybody should practice this concentration. Concentration. I have seen Niagara Falls. The water is coming from, it says, did you see? There is a gate there, this diverting water that way, and they generate electricity. From general water comes the generating electricity. So your our energy is coming to the mind, infinite energy is diverting, mind is scattering the energy, which is not focused. If focusing is very, very important. Who is now the enemy of our focus? I don't know. Internet. Did you see how the children are the two fingers are continuously texting, texting, texting? Mind is a scattered, all direction. They cannot hold, they cannot think, they cannot read, even few seconds. Continuously. No good. It will not work. If you have your mind is a scattered in all directions, you will never achieve it. The young generation must be trained. Very, very important. Swamiji said, if I had to start my education again, do you know what I would do? First, I used to learn concentration. Then with that perfect instrument, I will learn many, many things. First, I must learn concentration. Very, very important for 
1976. I went to Space Union Institution in Washington, D.C. It was the bicentennial of American independence. 200 years of American freedom, independence. I went there. Do you know what? There are 29 pavilions are there. Do you know the name of the show? Abroad in America. Abroad in America. When the foreigners, those who came to America and contributed to American heritage, their pavilions are there. Vivekananda is one of them. Huge pavilion. There are 29 pavilions in that show, <coughs> Abroad in America. They published a book also, I have that book. Abroad in America. I was astonished. We are very, very proud about Swami Vivekananda. Anyhow, let me say a prayer and then if you have any question, I shall be glad to say. Sarde Bhavant Sukhina Sarde Santuri Ramaya. Sarve Bhadrani Pushyantu Maya Pushyantu Kubhad Bhavet May all beings be <coughs> happy. May all beings be free from disease. May all beings attain peace. Let none be subject to misery. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace be <coughs> Sri Ramchandra Ji does never had any magic in his life, but eventually when we hear stories from different religion, I see the people connect whenever the magic comes up. So why is that? Because I have seen that people, um, whenever there is a story, any, any magic comes up, like we just said, um, Jesus Christ um, um, uh, uh, turns in things into wine and then also uh, they don't want to but magic stuff, and, and the people start believing more and more. Same thing happened with uh, Sai Baba Ji, that story comes up like he turns things into uh, water into lit up a lot of lamp, and then I see the people start following them. Same thing when I read about uh, uh, Buddhism, uh, people ask their disciples that show the magic, that if you have something, and then people follow them, though, though Buddha Ji, uh, Ask their disciple not to do that because then people's belief goes in a different direction. So I have seen that this type of delusion is in the society, and people are still um, like even if you read any of our books or any uh, things, it is being written in such a way that it comes up like a magic things, and the people start following them that they become a god. And as soon as there is no magic, there is uh, people don't believe that there is a god inside. So. I think my question is about the delusion that the that the people follow the or any person if if it's a if there is a magic attached. Could you bring it here? Could you everyone? You come and tell me what you main thing is it is it your problem miracles or what? Yes. I was in deep trouble when my first le second lecture in America. <laughs> in Hollywood. Religion and miracles, that was my topic. <laughs> Miracle is a kind of power they develop. And miracle brings destruction sometimes. Sri Ramakrishna told about miracles. Religion has nothing to do with miracles. Do you know what does miracles do? Let me tell you a story. Sri Ramakrishna met a person. He learned Bhutika Siddhi. When a human beings, he became a, like a fly and 
flew to somebody's house, and again he became a man. So <laughs> he became Gujika, somebody I think. He, she did, he attained that perfection, bodiless, and then take another body, this and that. So he went and entered the house of a rich man and fell in love with his daughter and was caught and was beaten up. <laughs> some people say, oh, I shall make Jesus Christ. Some Christian people, you will see Jesus Christ is making wine from water and fed 5,000 people with five breads. You read the Bible. Those are miracles. Some people understand that is true religion. I sometimes used to say, our Krishna, without feeding anything, fed 1,200 people. You remember in the Mahabharata, yeah. that Drupadi was waiting <coughs> and only one particular price and a little water gave to Krishna, Krishna ate, and Durbasa and 1,200 people are fed. I call Jesus gave a little bread, but our Krishna, without giving any bread, fed 1,200 people. <laughs> Miracle is not the right thing for religion. I know some of the teachers, they want to show miracles. Then you know what comes? Ego comes. And that brings it down. Sometimes they're beating up. Suppose if I start to, suppose I have a power, I can cure all cancer people. Do you know what will happen? Our Vedanta society will be full of people. <laughs> and then if I cannot do it, they will beat me. <laughs> See the power of miracle. It's really it is a terrible bondage. I gave Christ with you have showing the miracle. Oh, otherwise they will kill him. I'm glad that I do not have that power. <laughs> no, 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 no. Please look at the Upanishads. So those powers automatically come to the yogi. Sri Ramakrishna was telling Swami Vivekananda, eight occult powers are bubbling inside me. Do you like to have? Well, sir, what will you do? You can show miracles. Swami Ji said, Sir, first let me realize God. I shall think about it later. <laughs> Sri Ramakrishna was so happy that he was not tempted to have that miracles. My son, the religion cannot be just through miracles. No way. Oh, I know many yogis, gurus, babas, they show miracles. <laughs> Do you know what happened? I saw a young boy came in levitation. She used to go to what is called the the transcendental meditation. So she came in our basement in the big rubber tube. Here it was hockey. So I told me, hey, what are you doing, American boy? I told what are you doing? Well, Swami, I'm hopping. I'm in a hopping exchange. I told what does it mean? Well, I am learning levitation. I told how did you pay? Well, I'm $3,000 I paid for it. I told my goodness, paying $3,000, you have become a frog. <laughs> well, I'm in a hopping exchange. It does not go that way. <laughs> <laughs> if you read Sri Ramakrishna Shahi from the Upanishad Gita, you will understand true religion. <laughs> Miracles are no good. Next, next, next. <laughs> I shall never forget. That young man was coughing in our basement. <laughs> 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 Anyhow, I'm glad that I came and... So one more question. Yes. Uh, a lot of respects to you, Swamiji. Uh, I wanted to understand this concept, not a question basically, but uh, the first thing is you said uh, living uh, truthfulness and uh, complete truthfulness is not... Uh, it's not a feasible in this world. But we have a epitome like in Lord Sri Rama who had Satya and Dharma as both uh, weapons in his hands and he was abided, believed and abided by those two things in his life. He is not only has shown us the way how to live as a human being, but also shown like how to be responsible and be a, citizen, a good citizen by uh, having embracing both uh, truthfulness, satya and dharma. So what is your understanding regarding this aspect? I'm glad that you asked that question. I, I know I'm hurting me. 
<coughs> Do you know what will happen? If you are completely established in truth and truth alone, you will merge into deep samadhi. You will be warm with that Brahman. Do you know why? Because there is no Maya inside you. Maya. Please try to understand. Watch my five fingers. Existence, consciousness, bliss, that is God, Brahman. Nama, Rupa, name and form, that is Maya. 